Good day ladies and gentlemen, we are welcome to our lecture number 3 on CMAN 843. Today we are going to start looking at what we call crystal growth. Uh, if you can remember in our lecture 1 and 2, we discuss about different materials that are used as semiconductor devices and also we look at some uh, technicalities, mathematical expressions and other related issues on semiconductor devices. So today we are going to talk about crystal uh, growth. You see, whenever you want to fabricate an IC, which is integrated circuit, it is always fabricated on a single crystal uh, silicon substrate. Okay, you know an IC means integrated circuit. You can build a complete uh, electronic circuit on a single uh, silicon substrate such a way that you can have many transistors many diodes resistors and other components and this uh, crystal uh, silicon substrate it is a mirror like it is polished in a circular form and this circular material from the silicon is called a wafer and it is fabricated with different dimensions for instance we have the ones that are 4 inch or 100 millimeters in diameter and their thickness is up to 525 we have 6 uh, inches or 150 millimeters diameter with a thickness of 675 uh, micrometer uh, and also we do have its inches or 200 millimeters in diameter and even now we do have some bigger ones like 12 inches equivalent to 300 millimeters of diameter and of course a number of other dimensions and now uh, as i have said it is fabricated in this single uh, silicon crystal with different diameters and the thickness we talk about and uh, recently the manufacturers of ICs they are using the bigger diameter that is 300 millimeters uh, of uh, diameter but still the smaller ones do exist like 200 millimeter and of course currently the researchers or companies are developing bigger diameters like 18 inches which is equivalent to 450 millimeters and these wafers they are cut into slices from a large silicon, I mean crystal uh, of a silicon. They are cut into smaller uh, uh, parts and this crystal we call them silicon balls. That is another name for the silicon crystal on which we fabricate our ices. And as we all know, or we're supposed to know, the silicon uh, is, a, uh, is an element which is actually obtained from the sun from the quartzite sand and it is naturally occurring as an oxide of that silicon that is silicon dioxide the raw silicon that is the actual quartzite sand is reduced to metallurgical grades of a silicon and this reduction is done in a uh, electrical or electric furnace and we use carbon as a reducing agent that is the silicon dioxide is reacted to its carbon as reducing agent and we finally come off with the silicon plus carbon monoxide as the byproduct. But this metallurgical grade of silicon still contain large amount of impurities and for this reason it has to be purified again in order to get electronic grade. And this is done when we react the silicon obtained from that metallurgical grade when we react it with either hydrogen uh, chloride or the chlorine alone and the reactions are shown here the metallurgical grade uh, uh, silicon here is reacted with hydrogen chloride and we finally have uh, what we call a tetra we finally have what we call tetrachlorine silane or tetrachlorine uh, silane. And in this case, we have hydrogen as a byproduct when we use 
hydrochloric acid and here we don't have that because we reacted only with the chlorine now this uh, process it will give us what we call a volatile chloride the first one we call it trichlorosilane uh, and the second one is tetrachlorosilane then this uh, silicon that is together with hydrogen and, and the chlorine we now distill it and we reduce it again to a pure silicon and this is done in pure hydrogen uh, 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 in a pure hydrogen and we use this hydrogen as our reducing agent and if you do that it will remove all the other components and leave you with the silicon and the resulting uh, electronic grade uh, poly polycrystalline material that is okay it is very pure in such a way that it can be used for electronics for fabrication but still it do have some residual uh, or contaminations like boron is the most common impurity in this uh, uh, electronic grade silicon and we have two processes of doing this crystal growth from which we obtain electronic grade uh, uh, silicon the first one we call it Zokralski process and the other one is called float zone process the first one Zokralski very difficult to pronounce or in, some, in a simpler form you can call it CZ and the flux zone method we can call it FZ now let us start looking at the CZ process this process our electronic grade silicon our polycrystalline silicon we place it we put it inside a quartz crucible that is a quartz container and this container is surrounded by a graphite the function of this graphite is to insulate the uh, crucible in such a way that heat cannot be uh, 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 discharged to the surrounding and if you put this your polycrystalline silicon in this uh, uh, crucible surrounded by graphite you now start heating it to the molten state and you have to make sure that you do that heating in in that uh, atmosphere what we mean by this in an atmosphere where we don't have any elect elements or any compound that can react with our pure uh, silicon and this heating is done electrically using our electrical heating elements and in this process <clears throat> when it is molten we will insert what we call a seed rod and this seed rod is nothing but a pure silicon which has certain orientation and certain thickness we now dip it into the melt polycrystalline and gradually we will be withdrawing we will be bringing it out that is this seed rod we keep on bringing it out as it is coming out some molecules of the silicon from the mold or from the melt will be attaching themselves to this rod and for this you see that the thickness the diameter of the original rod we inserted will keep on increasing and they will be arranged the molecules that attach to it will be arranged with the same orientation with this uh, uh, road now this uh, seed as I've already said its diameter should be smaller than the final desired uh, uh, diameter in such a way that when it captures the molecules of silicon from the molten uh, silicon the thickness will now keep on increasing until we get the required diameter so the initial stage this CZ uh, uh, growth technique it requires solidification outward from the seed that is establishing the desired diameter this is all repetition of what I have already said the road we use is smaller in diameter now the molecules of the molten silicon will start attaching themselves to this surface of the road and by doing so the thickness of the silicon road will keep on uh, increasing once we establish we reach the desired uh, uh, thickness we we'll start withdrawing the uh, ball we we'll start withdrawing the rod from the ball that is from molten silicon gradually until we get it completely out of the uh, container 
this molten uh, silicon as we can see as we are drawing the rod out it will be solidifying and it will have a desired orientation and it will finally give us the desired thickness we need so during, during this growth process both the ball that's the molten uh, uh, silicon and the crucible that's the container we continue to rotate them the container should be rotating and the molten silicon in the container should also be rotating the importance of doing this is to give us uniform solidification of the molten silicon on our seed rod because if not you find that one side of the rod will attract more electrons or more molecules of the silicon than the other but if we keep on stirring it you find that the thickness will be uniform and the concentration ever part of the rod will be uniform so as i have already said the reason why we are stirring it is to make sure that we have precise measurements we have uh, thickness the same thing and the concentration the same thing and if we want to achieve this despite the fact that we are rotating the molten silicon and the container we have to make sure that the, con the temperature at which this is happening it is also controlled so that the amount of heat should not be too high or too low and you can achieve this uh, larger diameter only if you use a sophisticated computer feedback control system because this feedback control system will have sensors that will be testing different parts of the rods that we are withdrawing from the molten silicon in the container to make sure that the thickness everywhere is the same, the orientation is also the same. And of course, this feedback control system will help us to monitor the level or the rate at which we are withdrawing our seed rod to make sure that the speed is uniform so that the concentration should be averagely okay everywhere. This uh, CZ, uh, the parameters for this Zograski Zograski method, the half containers that can hold many kilograms of the molten silicon, and for this reason, the bowl that is the molten silicon is very much free from the crystal defect because it is much and it is being stirred continuously. However. Despite this uh, feedback control system using sophisticated computer and what have you, at the end of the day, we have some uh, impurities. One of them is the oxygen. And this oxygen impurity is obtained from the crucible, that's the container itself. And of course, we have another contaminant, which is a carbon. And the contamination of this carbon is obtained from the graphite for shielding, and of course, some other factors which cannot be accounted for but if we look at the uh, flood zone methods a solid electronic grade uh, polycrystalline silicon is recrystallized what we mean is that you melt it first and then you recrystallize it crystallization you know is a process in a chemistry where from the liquid you can have what the crystals of that uh, particular uh, uh, a chemical so we will now recrystallize it that is to mold it and change it into solid again using what we call needle eye furnace and this uh, furnace it is called with this name because it allows very small amount of the silicon to be passing at a time and that will help in ensuring the uniformity in the concentration and of course the arrangement of the particles and this process it produces highest purity silicon available but nevertheless it is not very strong it is brittle so what we are saying is that the scissors method has oxygen and the carbon as contaminants but this FZ method it has less of those contaminants but its problem is it is quite brittle it can easily get broken so the oxygen and the carbon that we said they are the contaminant in the CZ method. They are the ones that are responsible for making the product to be very strong so that it is not brittle as in the FZ method. And this contaminant, they enhance the mechanical strength of the final uh, 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 silicon. And for this reason, most of the wafers of the silicon, they are manufactured from CZ method 
not F, uh, uh, FZ because this one it is stronger despite the fact that it has oxygen and, ox and carbon as impurities their amount is not that very disturbing their mechanical strength is the most important so let us in brief uh, explain how this uh, Zokraski pr process takes place and we said the first thing you will do is to start your process by making sure that the silicon wafer is not pure it is not intrinsic you have to make sure that there is some amount of impurity introduced into it and the amount of impurity it can be boron group 3 it can be phosphorus group 5 it can be arsenic which is also another group 5 and you can it can be any other impurity they introduce this small amount of impurity if that is done so now the orientation of the crystal that is the orientation or the dimension or the nature in which the molecules of that crystal are arranged and also the background doping that's the small amount of doping i said is introduced they are always specified if you want to buy them from any manufacturer you are the one that will tell them okay my uh, wafer i want it to have so 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 orientation in terms of molecular arrangement and i want it to have this amount of impurity in either group 5 or group 3 you are the one that will take tell the manufacturers so the control of this dopant concentration and distribution during this uh, CZ process are very fundamental that is you have to control the amount of uh, impurity that will be introduced and the nature of arranging of the molecules in the final uh, uh, crystal wafer you want to buy and this uh, CZ growth method is usually uh, assumed to be done under rapid steering conditions. I have talked about this. I said whenever we dip our seed rod, we have to make sure that the molten silicon is continuously rotated, it is steered. And also the container in which it is, it is also rotated. And whenever you do that, it helps you to make sure that any excess impurity that is close to the interface of that road that is used as our seed is dispersed so that all the concentration of impurity along the road should be the same and this means that the melt that is the molten uh, silicon is thoroughly mixed and the concentration of any impurity is also thoroughly, uh, thoroughly mixed in such a way that the concentration of the impurity and the pure silicon everywhere is expected to be the same and of course this uh, concentration uniformity is expected to be up to the prison interface because at any point that your seat rod comes out we assume whatever is attached to it has already solidified so we need a uniformity inside the body of the molten silicon and of course we need this uniformity at the point of solidification and this of course if you want to achieve it it has to correspond to very slow growth of the crystal because if you say you want to be solidifying more silicon on that road definitely there is every tendency that concentration on one part should be more than or smaller than the other so the rate of this uh, impurity disbursement through the melt is larger than the rate of impurity incorporated into the prison, uh, prison crystal i mean the steering of the liquid and steering of the container is making sure that whenever there is much concentration of impurity at any point is dispersed into the molten silicon so that the uniform amount of impurities and the silicon will be now solidifying on the polygram below as you can see this one represents this boundary represents our container that's the crucible and here is the volume of the uh, uh, silicon itself with the concentration ci and this is the seed rod we talked about and you can see this arrow is showing the direction in which it is pulled that is we pull it from inside the uh, 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 melt uh, silicon and we pull it upward and this x stands for the distance that the uh, seed rod has been pulled away from the container and the s is the differential distance 
and this CS is the concentration of the silicon that solidifies on the seed uh, rod and now for this we can see the crystal mass that solidified is represented by W this W is not wet this time around it is representing mass and we can remember that mass is equal to density times volume so rho is our density and the volume is equal to area times the length therefore A is the area and x is the length the distance of pulling the rod from inside the container this ci or cl as i've said is the volume of the concentration of the solid that is the dopants the impurity atoms that are inside the melted uh, silicon and the cs is the volume concentration of the solid atoms in the solid crystal that is the amount of a uh, molecules of the uh, silicon that solidified on the seed rod so at any point you see that the crystal growth under the assumption that we are uh, stirring the solid itself and we are stirring the container also so we should assume that this concentration of the dolphins is uniform inside the melt we have already explained this one in the previous slides Whenever you are rotating the container and you are slide, I mean stirring the solid, the liquid silicon, you find that the concentration of the dopant and of course the concentration of the silicon itself are supposed to be uniform everywhere. But this CS, which is the concentration of the melt on the silicon, the ones that solidifies, they are function of the distance. Whenever this distance or pull of the seed rod upwards from the container increases, definitely the concentration is also going to increase. So if we assume this S is the total number of the solid atoms within the melt, that is within the container, then we can have a differential relationship between this uh, uh, S and of course the concentration of the electrons or the elements that uh, silicon that solidifies on the seed rod. So the S is the differential the concentration and CS is the concentration on the uh, rod which solidifies and we have said this A is the area and the S is the differential distance. So this can be represented by this because A times DX stand for our differential volume and if you want to get volume you see it is equal to the differential mass all over density. This DW is the differential mass and rho is the density. And why are we using this negative side in, uh, sign in this expression? It is there to indicate that we are losing atoms from the melt to the what? The growing crystal. That is some atoms inside the liquid crystal are now solidifying themselves on the seed rod in such a way that they become uh, 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 solid. Therefore, the concentration in the melt keeps on reducing with respect to the number of atoms or molecules that solidifies on the seed rod. So whenever there is a differential change in the length, that is the S, that is the distance of pulling the rod from the uh, liquid, then we have a differential mass, DW, which will be added to the rod, the crystal. So these differential quantities, you can simply relate them as follows. DW, that is the differential mass that solidifies, is equal to density times area times differential distance we pull the seed rod from the container. And at any point or at any length x, there will be a corresponding W mass that is solidified. Now the remaining, if we solidify W out, out I mean from the total uh, mass we have the remaining should be equal to w naught minus w where w naught is the initial mass of the uh, melt and w is the amount that solidifies on our seed rod so for this reason we can say that the concentration of the solid in the melt can be given by this expression that is cl equal to s p or s rho sorry where S is the concentration of the uh, uh, atoms in the solid as we said.
maybe we can see it from uh, here we said this s is the number of solute atoms that are inside the liquid uh, silicon from which we are solidifying on the rod so we can say that the concentration is equal to this number of atoms all over volume and if you want to see one over volume is equal to density all over mass because volume is equal to mass over density so one over density should be equal to density all over mass this gives us equation number three so now if i want to express the relationship between this ds and s with respect to dw which is the differential mass i can go back to my equation number one if you go back to equation number one you will have this ds equals zs over rho times dw now if you take this one and you combine it with this equation that says the concentration cl is equal to sp all over uh, w naught minus w this will give you this expression because ds related to dw is here and the s as we have seen from this equation s is equal to cl all over rho times this uh, w naught minus w so if you substitute the two equations you finally come up with this where this row outside the bracket will cancel this row inside the bracket so my ds over s is equal to minus cs over cl times dw all over w naught minus w so if we assume the concentration of the uh, impurity in the melt is equal we can assume that everywhere it is equal but however this assumption is not always the case so at a temperature these situations are described the relationship between the concentration in the uh, 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 solid that is those that solidifies on the road and the concentration that remain inside the liquid the relationship uh, is given by this coefficient k equal to cs all over cl had it been this assumption that we have uniform concentration uh, in the melt then cs and the cl will be exactly the same so the ratio k will give you one but in reality this is not the case the values for this k are given here depending on what is our impurity here introduced if it is boron 0.72 phosphorus 0.32 uh, if it is uh, uh, arsenic 0.27 up to indium which is the least 0.3036 so therefore the ratio k is not equal to one that one that is very even close to one is that for the bottom but for the others it keep on reducing let us go back to equation number four which is uh, here you can see from here the s over s is equal to cs over cl so this cs over cl is the one we removed in equation six and we put a k here then from this equation six you can take the you can integrate both sides and here we integrate the s uh, over s with respect over the limit from s naught to s and here we integrate with the limit from zero to w so this s naught is the initial number of the solid atoms in the melt immediately when the uh, uh, crystal growth starts and this s naught is given by this this is equal to c naught w naught all over rho where rho we know is the density w is the mass and c naught is the concentration now this C0 is initial impurity concentration also in the melt. So if we want to uh, simplify the expression, we can remove this W prime. We can replace it with a variable, just small letter W. And this small letter W is defined as W0 minus W prime. The W0 is the initial mass and the W prime is the variable at any point in time. So now, if you replace this expression, W0 minus W, by this small W, your expression 
from equation 6 our expression from equation 6 here you can see that it is w not minus this w so we remove the 2 and replace it with what a small letter w which give us this equation equation number 9 so if we integrate you know this is a lean identity uh, ds over s the integral of that should be lean of s and it has a limit from s naught to s so if we substitute we have lean s minus lean s naught and here also if you look at the dw over w of course it is equal to lean of w but we should put these two limits w naught to w naught minus w if you do that you have this now if we go back to the law of uh, uh, logarithm we know that lean minus lean will give us lean of one this one all over the lean of the other one so we have lean s over s naught and also here this k is outside the bracket here i have lean of w minus w naught uh, minus w all minus this so here also we are going to say we take one lean and we'll be given w naught minus w at our numerator then all over w naught according to the laws of indices and of course if we wish we can take the exponential of both sides because we know the exponential is reciprocal of what lean so if we do that we finally come up with this expression because the lean uh, exponential of this lean will cancel i will be left with s all over s naught and here the k will go up according to law of logarithm and if we take the exponential they will cancel the lean and will be given this and our equation number 12 is now s over s naught which is equal to w naught minus w all over w naught all raised to power of k so if we want to uh, express this our equation in terms of the initial melt weight that is the w naught and the impurity concentration you can see from this equation number 12 i can multiply both sides by s naught okay so therefore my s should be equal to s naught times whatever i have in this uh, bracket but i know that s naught is equal to c naught w naught all over rho and this is here in equation number eight okay so from here if i multiply both side by this s naught i will be left with s equal to s naught times everything here and this s naught is equal to c naught w naught all over rho and also if you wish you can further find another relationship that relates this s to cl and if i remove this s it is equal to cl all over rho times w naught minus w and if you want to see where this comes from we go back to our expression uh, in equation number three you can see it here my s is equal to cl <coughs> excuse me times w naught minus w all over rho so if i remove my s i can put this cl all over rho times this from equation uh, the equation i have just run uh, which is equation number three okay so i now remove my s and replace it by this variable here and therefore if you wish you can cancel out the row here in equation 14 will cancel this row also and this w naught minus w on the right hand side will cancel one of this you see here i have w naught minus w right raised to power k so if i cancel one it will be raised to power k minus one and then also this w naught will cancel one of this because this w naught at the denominator is raised to power k also so if this one on the top cancel the one in the bottom it will be left with power k minus one so all this bracket now reduces to raised to power k minus one as you can see here in equation uh, 15 and of course the concentration of the dopant uh, in the solid crystal is really related to this equation like this and if you look at it here i will be left with what uh, cs equal to k times c naught 
w minus w uh, w not minus w all over w not every to the power k minus one and how does that happen you need to remember that this k is the ratio of the two concentrations from here k is the ratio of the two concentrations in equation five here k is equal to cls all over cl and that is exactly what i did in this equation number uh, 15 instead of this uh, cl i know the relationship is cs over what C, uh, cl equal to k so i now bring that k in and my equation becomes equation number 16. just try substituting the value of that k which is equal to the ratio of the two concentrations here look at it cs over cl and if you do that equation number 15 will be will become equation number 16. then uh, from this we can also express this function as the length of the ingot what we mean by the ingot is that the road on which the pure silicon atoms solidifies during the uh, crystal growth and this equation number 16 will become this and how let me explain you can see that here in the bracket i have w naught minus w all over w naught so let me divide each by w naught w naught over w naught will actually give us one will actually give us one and this is what i have in this equation 17 okay and then going back to that equation 16 i will now have w minus w over w naught and the value of w as you know is the mass and mass is equal to density times area times the length so that is why here i have rho which is the density a is the area times length all over w naught so now this uh, uh, relationship it describes the variation of the impurity concentration along the length of our road that we use for crystal growth in CZ's, uh, CZ uh, process and this condition is only true or is only accurate when it is under rapid steering conditions that is the solute is continuously and rapidly being steered and as I told you even the container itself it, it is being rotated and the reason why we do all this is to make sure that we have uniform concentration of the dopant everywhere in the liquids and as this uh, uh, growth proceeds the impurity is rejected from the growing crystal what we mean is that I told you we use a smaller diameter rod which is our seed rod okay and when we insert it inside the melted uh, silicon the atoms or the molecules of the silicon the melt one will now be solidifying themselves along the length of this uh, rod so whenever we are approach approaching the, uh, the the thickness is becoming closer to what we need now whenever these molecules come closer they will be rejected and i told you all this thing is done under sophisticated control using feedback control systems and computers and at this uh, uh, point the concentration of the melt will keep on increasing because those that are attaching themselves to the, the road they have been rejected so the concentration will now be more inside the melt not on the uh, the, the road itself and this uh, causes another phenomenon it causes concentration of the impurity increase in the ball that is in the melted liquid and this is a function of what the distance from the seed end that is from the rod end if you look at this uh, diagram it is a plot of the uh, dopant concentration of the particle axis along the uh, with the length of the uh, the fraction of the length of the road on the horizontal axis as you can see the value of this length uh, fraction increases from 0 to 1 while the value of the dopant concentration increases from 0 0.01 up to 10 you can see whenever the length fraction is increasing all these curves are rising they are going up okay so it is a function of the distance as the distance of the road increases away from the melt the 
uh, uh, dopant concentration will keep on increasing as illustrated by this uh, diagram then so the seed end of the rows it is the point at which the length fraction is equal to zero from this graph the seed rod which is at the end is where we have the fraction equal to zero but the other end that is the opposite of the seed end it is the point at which the length fraction is equal to one or very close to one and this seed end it is the one that contains the least material solidified as you can see from this diagram when the fraction of the length is equal to zero we have the minimum for all these curves but as the length increases the curves are rising up to some value okay and of course the dopant concentration ratio is indicated on the vertical axis as i have said and it is the ratio of the cs to c naught where c naught is the initial concentration and we can see that the closer this ratio k is to unity the more uniform the doping profile will be for us to see this look at it whenever this uh, length is increasing from 0 to 1 you can see that the lengths of all these lines they are somehow straight though they are rising but they are almost straight but the moment you come to 1 you find that all these curves are tending to rise exponentially so the closer the ratio is to 1 the more uniform the concentration will be along the uh, road so this uh, broad parameter and the effective segregation coefficient, it can be modified. The rate at which the solute or the melt is solidifying itself on the road, the seed road, can be uh, 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 modified using this computer approach as I told you. And also the segregation coefficient, that is the rate at which we either attract this melt to the road or we disperse them into the body of the melt can also be controlled and how do we do that we can do that by changing the rotation of the uh, uh, liquids and the container of the liquids of course and also we should change the rate at which we are pulling the uh, seed rod from the container if you change that then the growth parameter will be changed and of course the segregation coefficient will also change and if you do that the crystal growth will proceed in distinct three phases okay by modifying the rotation and modifying the rate of pulling we have three different stages the first one it is the initial phase of the crystal growth and in this the crystal diameter is built up that is when we put the tiny or the narrow uh, road which we call the seat on which we want the liquefied molecules of uh, silicon will be solidifying we can the first phase is when we uh, build that that is at the rate at which the molecules in the melt will be attaching themselves to the rod then we have the second uh, phase and the second phase is where we program our rate of pulling the rod from the liquid and the rate of rotating the container and the liquid inside the container and if we modify this the rate of pulling and the rate of rotation it will result in crystal constant impurity concentration that is the essence i have already said it in the previous slide the essence of rotating or steering the liquid and rotating the computer i mean the container is to make sure that the concentration of the dopant is uniform everywhere in the melt and at some point the melt is substantially exhausted when most of the silicon in the liquid they have attached themselves to the seed rod and we have a, uh, a required diameter so we can see that the uh, 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 melt is exhausted and it is impossible to sustain that uniform uh, distribution of all the concentration inside and at this point you come to the last stage at which we should be pulling our rod rapidly so that we maintain our uniform uh, concentration so ladies and gentlemen this is the end of uh, lecture number three uh, thank you very much and i
want to repeat my suggestion that you have to make sure that you download this uh, video put it on your computer or on your uh, phone watch it again and again until it becomes very clear to you and it can even be sourceful it can serve as your revision means thank you